Alright, so I already showed you guys how to set up your cap process. What I'm going to do in this video is try and show you how the generic window looks when you assign a uh, machine operation. Um, I'm going to use uh, a sweeping operation just because it's a pretty generic window. Um, all of them are a little bit different based off of what it is that you're trying to do or the uh, parameters you have available. Um, so in sweeping, there's these five tabs and uh, these are the same tabs and uh, damn near all of them. First tab is how it is you're machining. Second tab is where you're machining. Third tab, what you're machining with. Feeds and speeds. And then your approaches and retracts. So I'll go through the first tab, how it is we're machining. First thing I look at is this image. This image can show you different things based off of parameters that you have set. Uh, right now I have it set to zigzag, I just want it to zigzag across the part, I'm cool with that. Uh, this red guy with the arrows assigns your tool axis and your sweeping direction. So I want my tool axis to be vertical, 001, and uh, I want to be able to see my tool, and I want my tool to be right here. So that way uh, I can take a look at uh, any features that might be in the way of it. Um, you can also point the tool straight towards you, however it is that you're looking at the part. Um, that can come in handy. And, but what I'm going to do is just vertical, or if you wanted you could uh, select a line or a surface, and you can also reverse it. Um, sweeping direction, much the same. Alright, so machining, uh, your tolerance, you can hit this little uh, question mark guy and he can um, show you what it is that that specific parameter does and come in really handy if you're learning um, this stuff from new. Radial step over and sweeping, that's all I really care about. I'm not doing a roughing operation or anything, so um, just my radial step over. Uh, you can get a little more fancy in terms of uh, just based off your scallop height or uh, your view angle. Let's say that I want to have that vertical, but I want to uh, view it from a different angle. I can select other axis and you'll see this arrow pops up and you can assign that however it is you want to do that. Um, I'm just going to go tool axis. I like the sweeping. Um, I'm going to go to constant keep it at one centimeter. Uh, I'll say this with three to five axis, you'll, so you'll see that this shows up in all these while you're under the how I'm machining it tab. I'm not going to go really far into it. Sorry about all the sirens. Uh, I'm not going to go really far into it, but if you go in here, um, you'll see a three to five axis can do some intelligent things like stepping away when it sees that it's going to have a collision. Uh, if you have a lathe, you can come in here and make sure that uh, on your rotation axis your tool cutter is normal to it um, and that's through a guide or whatever else it is you want to do and you know you assign that guide like so um, and then you have your approaches and retracts none of which I'm gonna get into right now I don't want to use three to five axis for uh, this specific demonstration so we're pretty much done in there. Um, you got axial, um, you know, you can do different things. You can, if you want to do this in multiple layers, do some sort of uh, roughing with sweeping, I could do that. Um, zone island and high speed machining, I don't usually get into. Perhaps sometimes I'll do high speed machining, uh, but it, it's not something I recommend unless you're really trying to cut seconds off your uh, run time. So let's go to the second tab what it is that we're machining. Now the first thing I see when I go to the second tab is the red light. I don't want um, any of these to be red because that means that I cannot compute it. This is de-intensified because one of these parameters is not set. In this case it's my part. So I'll go ahead and assign that. And now this image is more complex uh, where and what it is that we are machining. What I use in here is part limiting contour and check and also setting how far off of the part I am and how far off the check I am. Uh, you may also use top and bottom in roughing and sometimes if you're over in an angle safety plan can help you 
um, kind of reel in those crazy retracts that you'll see because uh, you'll have a surface like this and it'll have to retract until perpendicular to your tool axis it is clear of that surface. Well if you put a safety plane down here it'll do its retract and then it won't try and do a rapid way back to the end of part. When I was first starting that always drove me crazy and the safety plane really helped me reel those in. And these options down here are de-intensified because without assigning a limiting contour they have nothing to go off of. So let's go ahead and assign a limiting contour. Um, you can select the edge of the parts or wherever, the edge of whatever it is that you're trying to machine. You can use this icon to chase around. Um, you can use this icon to back up. Wait, this icon to back up uh, whatever you've selected. Um, I'm going to chase it around. I'm going to chase it around, and you'll notice that uh, it says angle. That means you can't chase anymore. I'm going to zoom in there, and you'll see I got some funky geometry. Uh, I did a bad job modeling this, and um, that's one thing with uh, advanced machining. If you get some funky surfaces, you'll see them. Uh, I've had um, I've had parts see little tiny cracks in between surfaces, and I'm doing a lead and tilt, and uh, based off that lead and tilt, it tries to dive down inside that crack. Um, or if there's a, a cusp off of uh, you know some corner, it cusps. Uh, your advanced machining workbench will definitely test your patience in uh, showing that all those defects are there. I'm going to ignore this and just keep going on. And so now that I went around that, I should be able to chase around this corner. Um, and now let's say I didn't want to deal with that defect on this side. I just wanted to go straight back to my beginning. I could either draw a line or just connect where I'm at to the beginning, inserting a line. And if I want to delete all that, I could use this icon, but I'm okay with it. Um, and also that bar that was up here, I just mounted it up there. I think usually when you come to fault, it's wherever it's at. So you can grab that and mount it wherever you want to mount it. Um, and now you'll notice that these are active and you can change these to whatever it is that you want to change them to. Uh, I like doing contact point overlapping. So that's just usually what I do, but um, it depends on the case. And a lot of these features uh, that you've selected here, you can you can save them and uh, use those if you have some sort of uh, assembly line type setup where you want to use that specific style of feature, how your limiting contour is set, how your check is set. Um, you can do that all in uh, with these. Once I hit OK, you'll, you'll notice that uh, these will become available for the next operation being called sweeping point three. Um, next is what we're cutting with. Um, I'm cool with this cutter. This just came in default. If I wanted to select a different cutter, I could hit this asterisk. And this brings up a list of cutters that are available inside my cap process. Um, I don't have anything here because this cap process is just default, so I don't have any tool catalog available to me. Um, but if I did have a tool catalog, I could hit this uh, uh, magnifying glass and go into Katia and see if they have a tool catalog or perhaps a tool catalog I have set up and select different tools. Um, I don't have any holders or collets um, modeled in or available to my cutters, but I would suggest using those. Three to five axis will interact with your tool holders, um, so that can definitely come in handy but in our case just using this cutter sounds good feeds and speeds right away I take off automatics because these um, I always change my feeds and speeds in, in my particular um, use of advanced machining uh, different materials different cutters blah 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 and if those are uh, assigned this is locked and what that's locked to is whatever you know chip loads that you have assigned inside of that specific cutter so that can cause you problems when you have a whole lot of operations all lined up and if you want to select 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 get them all lit up and say okay I want to change my sh machining feed rate or change my spindle speed uh, when you go into that you you know you'll try and do it but you can't do it because these are locked so I always try and unlock those um, while I got this open you can right click up here 
you can do a filter to change you know what it is you can hold control and select what you want to have showing um, or you can change the, the order of them cool with that um, Right, approaches retracts, uh, pretty much what it sounds like. Um, I think these usually come in as just axial. Actually, I think it's based off of uh, a long tool axis like that. What I like personally is built by user. Um, in here, you can use all these to build your own specific approach, however it is that you want to get down to your starting point. Um, in this case, I'll ramp in and have a decently large approach and my ramp I'll put a little bit of an angle on it and now you can see here these question marks show up again uh, which will show you what it is that you're changing and let's see what that looks like alright so you can see it drives across um, it's got a good approach it's retract is clear um, one thing I don't like is this big step over and let's pretend we just don't want it to go up on this flange or this face back here we're just trying to get down in this deep pocket for a semi well if that's the case let's be a little bit off the surface for a semi and instead of just going straight vertical even though I want to keep the cutter vertical uh, I'm gonna go off a different axis and I'm gonna try and look down inside this pocket. Um, I know that I overhang by like two centimeters so I'm just gonna say about there. View just like tool axis I'm gonna go as I'm looking at it and you can see that my eye is damn near zero so I'll just straighten it out. Hit OK and now it'll compute based off of that view angle. Um, I'm also going to assign a check to these flanges and I'm going to make it a couple centimeters away and compute. Alright, so we're down there. We've got a good step over. Um, if we, uh, You can change this in your tools options where you click on it and actually see where your cutter is at. and come in really handy. I really like that. Another thing while we're in here, uh, this breaks down how it is it replays. I'd usually just leave it on this guy unless I'm really trying to get into the nitty gritty of how I'm going down. Uh, this will do all your axis change every time there's a change in your point. Uh, this will give a little vector showing where where your tool will be pointed in that specific point uh, or your tool. Now you want to be careful with this one because if you have something really big and swoopy you'll just have cutters all over the place and you can select this and freeze up your computer if you don't have the resources necessary. Um, this icon, make sure you have it to the one that I have selected. I think it comes default uh, all green. What I don't like about this is that I can't see that that's my retract. It just looks like a big toolpath. Um, but I like to have it uh, approaches and retracts so I can see, okay, it does a uh, it does a rapid or it does a retract, and then there's a rapid above it. I can tell that based off the different colors. Um, I'm cool with that, but I want to get rid of that rapid. Let's say that I was at an angle or something, and that rapid is just shooting out into space. To get rid of that, you can assign a safety plane, and that'll make sure that after the retract, it won't do any rapids beyond that safety plane. So you can see that that, uh, that reeled that in. Um, and all right, I'm happy with that. So I think next I will go over tools. So if you want to take a look at a tool video on how to maybe set up your tools, put a holder, um, start a tool catalog, go ahead and click on my face. And uh, like and subscribe.